Hey, this is Detroit Bob, and welcome back to Rock Mine. Rock Mine is a weekly show where we scour the dustbins, record shops, flea markets of America, and all over the world looking for gems, vinyl gems like these. I'll tell you what, it's been a blast. We have a new episode every Friday, and we're on episode 51. So this has been a big smash hit. Tune in every week. Tell your friends about it. 15% of our viewership right now is from the UK. So these guys love American rock and roll, R&B and soul, and that's what we're all about. But this week, we're going to get back to where it all began. And the first 45 that I bought since I started this craze about four or five years ago was from Third Man Records. And it's a reissue of the Bob Seger system. We've talked about it before. I went back and got it on yellow vinyl, but you can get the original if you look around for it. Two plus two is on my mind. And if you want to hear the middle part of this song, you're going to hear something that sounds a lot like Seven Nation Army. So don't kid yourself. Bob Seger sort of has a garage rock background, and I'm pretty sure Jack White picked up on some of that. But on that same note, I was so impressed with Third Man that I joined their vault. And what that is, is a record club where they send you quarterly mystery packages like this. And we're going to open this one up. We're going to go through it. I hope I have another 45 or what the UK folks would call 7-inch single in there because that's my niche. But I think there's going to be an LP. Maybe it's the new one. Maybe it's the new one called No Name. I don't know. We will find out because by the end of this episode, we're going to dig into this. We're going to go through some third man record stuff. And I'll probably show you the gem of the week, which was going back and picking one up that one of our viewers told us about that I had missed. So you're not going to want to miss that. You're going to want to tune in every Friday. And if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. It's all about the thrill of the hunt. And we're always hunting for new gems, the vinyl kind. Stay tuned, and we're going to get into it. Before we begin, I'm going to talk about storage. Now, I have a 12,000 record collection of 7-inch records. And I fortunately have an old medical records cabinet, which stores all of them, A through Z. I don't really like end-to-end -end storage when I'm looking for something quick. But you got to do what you got to do. So I came up with a solution. In my world, records are always stored or viewed or best viewed in a bin like this. A through Z. And you went through the basic catalog of everybody, the Beatles and worked your way all the way to Z. Maybe you didn't make it to Z, but you would pick up where you left off. Real simple, right? And the bin storage system has worked out really, really good for LPs. And Jack White's artwork on his 45s are so good, or is so good, that I, I wanted to do something similar, but there wasn't a lot of options out there. Well, I figured it out. I found a company in Germany that made these perfectly shaped little 45 bins. And as you can see, it's got the sloped shoulder there. And I think it holds, is it 60 or 100? I can't remember. But either way, I'm like, okay, this will work. And what I did from there, I ordered two of them. I paid for shipping, probably cost me 50 bucks for just the two. But I kept one assembled and one unassembled and gave them to my buddy who's a semi-retired woodworker. So what did he come up with? Well, he came up with this right here. And basically I told him, keep the internal dimensions the exact same as our prototype and the shoulder, the same angle. The outside I didn't care about. He went a little thick on the wood, but these things are heavy duty. And this hasn't been stained yet, but when it does, 
you will see that it really, really looks nice. And you can tell this one's been stained. This is the larger LP. And so you don't have to overthink this. You can find someone who's good at uh, woodworking, give them what you want, and then have them build your shelving. So 45s held in a bin like an LP, uh, doing it justice to the artwork that Third Man Records typically has. So now I can look at my 7-inch records in the same format that I would basically LPs. And I can see the artwork. The great thing about Third Man is they're all numbered. So what I've done now, I've got enough of a collection of Third Man records that I've just segregated them in their own bin. And I've, I find that I'm picking them up used. Now, I can get these at the vault for 6 bucks. So if I find something used... I always pick it up. For example, this is Third Man number 110. Now, Jeff the Brotherhood, never heard of them, but it's probably these more obscure ones that are going to get a smaller pressing or they won't be reissued after the first run. Jack White, it does great with the packaging. I wish it was totally sealed up, but this is really good quality stuff like that. And then your traditional sleeve is on the inside. And of course... You never know what color vinyl he's going to use. Most of the time it's black. Once again, I love the old uh, radio tower. Uh, it reminds me of uh, WLS or WOC in Davenport or WHO in Des Moines. Those early radio references in the artwork. Once again, TMR, Third Man Records, number 110. You can see that nice, clean, the yellow and the black. And I remember when I took the tour, there was some significance to that color scheme. And we all know Jack White is about color scheme. The guy it really is an enigma. 33 uh, Grammy recommendations or nominations and 12 wins. Come on. He was born in 1975 in Detroit. Interesting cat. And I love his irreverence to uh, rock and roll. Now, he does these repressings, too. And I've gone over some of these with you, but it's just look at the original chest sleeve that he's reproduced, front and back. And Memphis, Tennessee, backed with back in the USA. You can get these if you join the vault for 10% off. Some of these are like $6.70. Um, the theme here. On the uh, Freedom at 21, which consistently carries over the artwork through all the singles off of that album. And there's like little nuanced variances. Now, some of these are stickered where I'm flipping through bins and I'm like, oh, I get a used copy for six bucks. Even if it's a double, I pick it up. All the old white stripe stuff, which is really, really good. Um, he's got that. So you're going to want to pick those up. Um just to be part of your collection. The A side, the B side, Lord send me an angel. The white stripes, I just don't know what to do with myself. There's no home for you here. Once again, if I can get doubles on something used, I always pick up doubles. So this is third man number 118. So that's pretty early, right? Um, and it might be a reprint, might not. Third man number 141. Um the Big Three Killed My Baby. I love that song. Third Man one, number 117. Look at how young these guys, Meg and Jack. Okay. Uh, Third Man 88. Now, I'm sure this is a, a reprint because I think this was originally called uh, on the label called Italy Records. Now, if you can find that, that's huge because these were probably made in the less than a thousand, you know. But the first three albums... Uh, the White Stripes were just a, sort of a local phenom, or was it just the first two? Um, Lafayette Blues, Sugar Never Tasted So Good. Once again, a reprint of the original Italy records, but still too good not to pick up it. Third Man, number 18. Everybody knows this song, right? Everybody who came in to the game late. Well, by this time, this is already Third Man Records, a little flaw right there. Third Man Records, 264. So good, I got two of them, right? Um, picked this up in Portugal. He has unique releases and unique versions, rag and bone, uh, to the European market. All just screaming, collect me, collect me. Uh, the White Stripes, there you go, Seven Nation Army. And um, by this time, these guys are a phenom 
phenomena, really. Third Man 262. Uh, Dead Leaves and the Dirty Ground. When I heard this album, I'm like, yeah, this is this. These guys are legit, right? Fell in love with a girl was on it. Hotel Yorba was on it, and then I really got back into the Jack White um, album scene around this album, and it's great just because the color scheme matches all the album artwork. So now he's doing blue, right, and um, some of his solo stuff. You know, picked it up as I go along. Lazaretto, you know, got this one. And re really cool song. The Raconteurs, the side projects. If you wanted to start just collecting new 45s and get into the 70 or the seven inch genre, I would definitely recommend, you know, starting with Third Man and work your way up from there. So look at the stuff. Uh, you guys big fans of Sesame Street? Jack White and the Electric Mayhem. And, uh, of course, he's got to do a Stevie Wonder song, You Are the Sunshine of My Life, uh, and a version featuring the Muppets. So that's Third Man, uh, number 173. So if you just collect the Jack White stuff, I picked this up used somewhere. If you're getting it for six bucks, you can still get this stuff on the secondhand market, fairly inexpensive. But the vault just gives you the access Okay, very cool during COVID. Um, someone didn't show up for Saturday Night Live and Jack White filled in and he put out a 45 and you could only get that if you were part of the vault package. So that was very cool. Um, got that. And uh, don't hurt yourself, ball and biscuit. Jesus is coming soon with Lazaretto. So this, this got rave reviews. And if you're part of the vault package, and I, I'm not getting anything to say this. I just like this guy's way of uh, of releasing this stuff third man 769 so you know pretty soon he's going to be in the thousands so the last tour i saw him on this tour and i did see him on the white stripes and he does other people like here's third man pressing dwight yoko so you got to love that and that's third man 363 here's uh third man doing kate pearson of the b-52s so jack will throw out a 45 in Venus. Everybody remembers shocking blues version of that. Um, this was the, the seven inch that came out with the miles Davis package. And it's an interpretation. Uh, Christina's my daughter's into this, this group here and they're called shovels and rope. I picked that up used it's a little banged up, but I'm loving it. Um, the artwork for the dead weather is out of this world. So Allison Mosshart, I think is her name. She is fantastic. And uh, I hope to see them do some more stuff. And then the reissues of The Sun. You just can't beat this. Elvis Presley, My hab Happiness. Roy Orbison, uh, Get Rhythm by Johnny Cash. The Jesus and Mary Chain. My buddy Johnny. I saw these guys in Brixton, England in 1987. So uh, right outside of London there. And Beck, there's an issue by Beck. So when Bob Dylan and Beck and these people are showing up at, at Jack White's place, Barrett Strong Money, <laughs> it's where it all began. Notice that uh, Barry Gordy right there. And this is a third man number. Whoa, does it have a number? Yeah, 364A, something like that. My eyes aren't as good. This is the one they gave away when we um, when we toured it. Issue Bond. Was it them? Nick and the Jaguars? No, 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 no. No, it, I think it was these guys right here. When we toured the factory, uh, Third Man Records in Detroit, everybody got a 45. I'm pretty sure it was the Swinging Tigers, which uh, William Robinson, that would be Smokey and Barry Gordy writing that. I'm pretty sure they were renamed something. And then just used stuff I pick up. Um, you might like, well, who are these guys? You're not familiar with... Uh, Smoke fairies, okay? Pick it up for five bucks on the used market. Yeah, this guy's awesome. I'll butcher his name, but uh, Michael Kiwanuka. Sort of like a neo soul guy. And then, like I said, if I'm picking stuff up, if I, I run across it used, I pick it up. And it's very cool. It's all formatted with that third man logo. Captain Beefheart. I got to dive into this guy. Now, this I paid 20 bucks for because it was an old vault package 
And when I was at in Detroit, I said, do you have anything that's exclusive for vault members? And they said, well, we do have some unsold old vault package 45s. I'm like, there you go. That's where I picked up that Eddie Vedder. I think I sold that. I did sell that. I sold the Eddie Vedder for 20 bucks. I bought it for 20 bucks. I sold it for like 66 bucks. I got it into the hands of a collector. So I'm happy. Here's another Swinging Tigers. That was Danielle's version. Um, here's another version that I'm, so I'm picking, these are very collectible and I'm picking up used. And I think it's going to be a slow burn on like value on these. So I'm not, I just love the artwork and I appreciate what Jack white is doing uh with this this genre so very very cool and you you could just do there's the dead weather again once again a, a an exclusive vault uh release that you can't get anymore so those are the ones dead weather exclusive vault release with the white stripes hardest button to button from the vault mud honey okay jack white uh Boogie Blues by Earl Peterson. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this stuff. Um, you know, you can't, you can't really, you know, just some of the close-up on some of the labels there. The Rockets, 455. I was like, I got to pick that up. It just looks interesting. Once again, the art uh, theme. You know, he'll, he'll pick up some older Detroit, Michigan, anything with a Michigan connection. Um, definitely a reverence to Sun, to Motown. Uh, I finally got the Christmas one, and I don't know where I found it. But uh, the vault package, it'll say sold out on some of these quite often. But if you just wait around, um, not only do you get your 10% off, but if you order 100 bucks or more, um, Cuts Like a Buffalo, that's a great song right there. So there we go. Let's get into this month's vault package and see what's in there, and then we'll go over that gem of the week, uh, which was a return and pickup. I'll explain later. All right, Rock Mind's the name of the show. We're ready to open up this vault package from Third Man Records. I have no idea what's in here. I don't look ahead on the web page to see what the next package is going to be. Um, I like the surprise factor, and I like when something is on my step when I get home from a trip from buying records and it's just like a bonus. So I'm going to make an episode out of every one of these. I think it's sort of fun. I hope you enjoy it. If you do uh, hit the subscribe button down below, we're getting up near a thousand and that's the goal. And let's do that, but let's open this now. All right. So I got my handy craftsman blade here. I always be careful when you're opening this stuff because <laughs> I have been known to cut myself before. Set that off to the side, and let's get in here. All righty. Um, these things are always very well packaged, and I'll try to open it up so you can see what I'm looking at in real time. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm liking this already. So there's a thing called whiplash packaging, and I'm pretty sure this qualifies. Bob Dylan, right there, first thing that jumps out at me. So I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to get rid of this packaging. And how Jack White lands Bob Dylan, I have no idea. I'm going to cut this open. And once again, I thought it might be the mystery album, the no-name album, but maybe that's coming. Maybe we're waiting to see what the Grammys will be. Uh, once again, Jack White nominated for two Grammys for this latest offering. Oh, here it is. And I'm seeing an album. I'm seeing a booklet. And I'm also seeing a 7-inch. So this is, this is what it's all about. Bob Dylan in the band. Now, everybody knows the band, right? Up on Cripple Creek, the night they drove all Dixie down. Uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, originally from Toronto, used to be the Hawks, who played for Ronnie Haw Hawkins, and became Bob Dylan's quote-unquote backup band uh, when he toured and when he went electric. So there are a lot of recordings, some of which are on the bootleg series, 
but the live recordings with the band, the missing songs from before the flood. So this is going to be very interesting. And you can see the different characters in the band. Robbie Robertson. You got Levi and Helm. Uh, you got Rick Danko. Richard Manuel. And uh, help me out. Garth. Garth Hudson. Right? The, the virtuoso on the keyboard. Look at this. It's a double gatefold. I don't know if you can just see the majesty on that. But some great photography. Packaging for Jack White is spared no expense. So this is really a beautiful LP. And do I collect LPs? Heck yes, when they're this nice. But look at the booklet. And I'm going to devour this. This is the first time I've seen it. Um, this goes right back to, you know, Bob Dylan um, live at Albert Hall era. And basically just a continuation of that sound where he jumps over to electric. But this fast forward to 1974. Before the Rolling Thunder review, I'm quite sure, there was this sort of a middle period with the band. And I'm sure this is going to hold up really, really well. And I'm going to give it a really good listen. But look at the 7 inch. Oh my gosh. Blowing in the wind right there. Probably the song maybe of that generation that will still be playing 100 years from now or more. Blowing in the wind. Recorded in 1974, uh, the 13th and the 14th of February, in Englewood, California. Originally Columbia, but now Third Man Records. Most likely you'll go your way and I'll go mine. Another great, ooh, hang on. I didn't realize, green, lime green vinyl with a swirl in it. Now, if you don't love the collectability of this, you're just crazy. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just got so many things to like about it. And this is third man number 993. So we're getting up to a thousand. And what a great little add-on. Uh, Tip, now, you can't go buy this 45. I, I doubt that it will be part of anything but this vault package. And then he always comes off with a, this is vault package number 61. Everything is numbered. He always comes up with a little rip sheet or a tear sheet on what we're looking at. And uh, this is the 15th anniversary of the vault. And the longest continuing running vinyl subscription club in the world. So there you go. BMG Record Club, Columbia Record Club, uh, all the great record clubs we had, gone. Vault is still around and they're still kicking ass. So I love that. All right, so let's wrap that up. I'm going to savor this. Uh, I'm going to go through all of this. Uh, once again, Bob Dylan and the band, the 74 live recordings, came with a 7-inch, came with a booklet, and came with a nice, it looks like a triple LP. Yes, the triple LP. So look, some of the songs are Leopard Skin Pillbox Hat in Chicago. So there's some of these from Chicago, California, Maryland. I'm going to just eat this right up. It's so good you almost don't want to play it. But I'm not a record snob, so I'm going to play it. Okay, so coming up, uh, Gem of the Week. Uh, let's go back to that little uh, antique mall in Crown Point, and there was a title that one of our viewers told me I have to go back and pick up, and I did that. Stay tuned. I went back to the Crown Point Antique Mall, and I had a little trouble finding it, but I dug through this bin at the last bin in the store, basically, that had 45s. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm not going to find it. And I'm literally down to the last 10 or 12 right here looking for it, digging for it, hoping that I can find it. So some guy from Records and Culture, all one word, on YouTube said, yeah, go back and pick that up. Now, this was a $5 bin, so I was hoping to find it, number one, but also find it for $5. But it was looking slim. Uh, as you see, there it is right there. <laughs> and I swear to God, this was not a setup. It was the last one. And it wasn't 5 bucks; It was a $20 record. But I'm thinking I got a top side to it, so I picked it up. Rockmine here. 
the gem of the week here it is lavelle hardy don't lose your groove and look at how clean that was so it was definitely worth going back i found it in the very back of the bin where i had originally passed so someone moved it maybe i moved it but it came out in 1967 the genre is funk soul and the style is soul now 137 want it 255 have it so that's about two to one uh, have versus want. That's pretty good ratio. Median value is twelve dollars and eighty one cents. High value forty dollars. So this I, I rated it as a very good plus. I mean it's really clean. The B side right there, Women of the World, and uh, it, Rojack is a sort of an odd label. I'm really not that familiar with it. Um, Rojack Records. Uh, it's basically out of New York and founded in Harlem by a guy named Jack Taylor, a purported gangster, initially operated as a soul and R&B label from 57 to 72. Uh, so, you know, it has some ties to early hip hop and Harlem disco. So uh, you don't see a lot of these Harlem uh, releases, New York City labels out here in the Midwest. So a good spot by our listener, um, and viewer, I think it was one of our UK guys, I don't recall his name, but uh, thank you very much. There's a small scuff, if you will notice, right here, but I don't think it affects the value. And there's a, like a stamp somewhere on the label, right here. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, someone stamped it and it basically says, thanks, John Burrow Music Merchants. So this could have been the distributor saying, hey, this is, just remember where you got this record from, stamping his little thing on it. Very cool. Now, I paid 20 bucks for it, but I've got it listed for sale for, I think, 30, um, 36. So, and I'm just, t Discogs tells you what to sell these things for. Um, it's not really in my wheelhouse, so I'm happy to get it into somebody else's. Um, and selling, um, I would say two to one return, I think I got 10% off of it, so that knocks it down to, it's a 20 bucks, I got it for 30, 18, yeah, so 36 bucks, I doubled my price. So I think I probably set a little bit higher of a price, so that will happen. And all my profits go right back into Rock Mine and buying more records. <laughs> I'm not making any money on these things. So uh, if you want to do an episode with me, let me know. If you want me to come to your city, let me know. Uh, I'm going all over the world. We got uh, Italy in the books. We're going to get some great jukebox 45s out there. We're working on the Netherlands because that's like 45 heaven and jukebox, jukebox heaven out there too. Uh, we got some other episodes coming up. Uh, we're going down to Florida. We're going to go to the Gulf side and hit a couple record shops over there around New Year's. I had a big wedding coming up this weekend. So I'll see a lot of you guys there. Cheers. Until next time, rock mine. Subscribe. And we will see you.